Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome. My name is Sean Wilson, and I am the Product Marketing Manager for Skype for Business, and welcome to our broadcast. Uh, we've been a couple weeks since we came back from Enterprise Connect. We had a great time there. So one of the big announcements that we had there was the announcement for auto attendant and call queues. And so what I decided to do was bring in our, uh, I guess, expert so to speak. Our, our program manager, uh, Marina, to talk a little bit about um, Cloud PBX, some of the advanced calling features, and then if you stick around, we might get a little bit of a demo in. But one of the things I wanted to just start real quickly with, don't forget, we've got the Bing Pulse and Q&A manager. Uh, we're trying out some new digs and seeing how this works because we've moved buildings. So uh, you know, bear with us as we kind of go through this. But Marina, Welcome. You want to give me a little background on, on who you are and, and what we're going to talk about today? Well, thank you very much for inviting me, Sean. That's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Marina Kolonitz, and I'm a product owner for Auto Attendant and Call Keys. And today I will talk to you about what it is, what can you use it for, and what you expect in the future. And in the end, you will see a demo of how to put it together and a live call demo as well, so you can actually see what you have today. Awesome, awesome. That's that that's that's great. One of the things that I want to kind of level set as we start to talk about this is we talk about Cloud PBX and and you know Cloud PBX is this new I'd say it's kind of the phrase or the the key, the fad of of the of the terminology of moving into telephony of today. Um, kind of as of the the voice over IP was the one of the previous generation, right? So. Cloud PBX is taking those core call, call control functionalities that once existed on-prem, right? And moving those into the cloud. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Cloud PBX and Skype for Business is. Uh, just as you said, it is basically moving your telephone into the cloud and getting rid of all your pesky and bulky on-premises deployments for your telephony. You can have Microsoft as your telephony provider. You can outsource your call management and the whole admin part to Microsoft. Okay. Microsoft also gives you, as Cloud PBX, a lot of control that you can do it yourself, both as an end user and as administrator. And call keys and auto attendant. By the way, call keys used to be known as hunt groups. A lot of people know yeah. the term. No, you have this yeah. So as, as we think about hunt groups, right, we think about hunt groups as hey, I want to be able to go and hit a whole group of people. And there's a couple different ways that hunt groups have lived in historical. We'll talk a little bit more about hunt groups specifically at Microsoft and what those mean for us. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to, uh, to to first touch on before we, we talk into these features is one of the biggest reasons that we moved this functionality into the cloud was with the changing landscape of the PBX. If you think about the PBX, historically has been, uh, you know, very, very administrative heavy from call routing to provisioning to all that. And it's been, it takes a required skill set, but it also is timely and costly. So one of our core goals with Skype for Business was let's put that into the cloud, simplify provisioning, and uh, give those core features. Now, as we came in, we started with a initial set of features, right, to take care of that initial, you know, basic calling features. And then we've now added auto attendant and call queues. And so we're going to dive right into that. Uh, if we can, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about auto attendant. And so um, tell us a little bit about what an auto attendant is and what we do with it right now. Basically, your auto attendant is your first customer facing entry point in your business telephony system. It will meet and greet your customers for you. Okay. It will uh, give the customer call the first call treatment in an interactive and interpersonal way. Explain that. Uh, it's it's an interactive. It comes with a speech recognition. You can always uh, bypass speech recognition and type it in like it used to be the old system. It will give you a few options. It will ask you a few questions. It will take oh. your responses in and it will send your call to the best destination. One of the things that I wanted to, to, to dive in is if you think of an auto attendant, think of it as your virtual receptionist, right? You call in, you land at this person, and it says, hey, I'm at uh, this location. I'm calling into my Hawaii uh, office, right? So I call into my Hawaii office because who doesn't want to work in Hawaii, right? Um, 
So I, we work at our in our Hawaii office, and from there we decide, hey, we're going to move from the Hawaii office. Uh, we want to also make sure that we enable different people within that. So if I move to the Hawaii office, I want people to be able to call into that office and find me. And so what you're saying is the auto attendant will enable people to call in on that one main number, that main line number, and get a hold of me via voice or if they decided to type my name in. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it has more features than that. You can set up business hours, for example, and what you do during business hours. Oh, that's great. So like if I'm a doctor's office and at five o'clock I want it to close and send them to voicemail or forward, I can set that up? You can absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You can construct a menu. Maybe you're a doctor's office and maybe somebody calls and wants to reach your lab. Uh, you can put it as a menu option. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So, so, but an auto attendant only really takes care of your first function, your first set of routing. What happens if I decide, hey, I have kind of a chain to do. I want to be able to make sure that I hit all of my salespeople at once. Is that, what is that? Is that part of auto attendant or? Well, that is a separate functionality that we know as call keeps. Um, oh, the old hunt group. The old hunt group. Okay. Yes, excellent. Yes. Excellent. What does it do? It basically provides you automated distribution call uh, function. All need an hour call in the Okay, excellent. So we're we're one of the big pieces though is that that with call queues is that a call queue can do one of two things. One, it could be part of an internal part of your your organization that hey, I want to call help desk. So I call and I, I dial the help desk and it it routes me out. To the, people. to the people. One of the other pieces, though, is I can attach that if I want somebody coming in from outside. So tell me a little bit more about that, like how I would take auto attendant and use it with a call queue, or describe how you build a call queue, and then we can kind of get into the demo in a bit. Our call queues yeah. have been built up to work with auto attendant team. They are multi level, multi function business flow using call queues and auto attendance. Okay, so, so, but in call queues, so a call queue by itself, one of the things that's neat and you're going to see this is because it's in Office 365, we've actually taken the call queue functionality and it's tied in with AD, so you can actually build it off of DLs. Historically, to build a call queue, you'd have to go figure out the extension, figure out the person, make sure they're there and do all of that, right? So one of the nice things about being part of Office 365 is that continuity of, um, Continuity of your your personas and, and, and identity really goes from Office 365 into your cloud telephony solution. Absolutely correct. The whole purpose behind uh, designing auto attendance and call queues is continuity, integration, and simplification of the flow. Everything is taken care of behind the scenes. Excellent. All you need to do is reuse what you probably already have in your office. Excellent. So let's, what I want to do is I want to, want to give an example of how it could be complex with the business call flow. We're going to show the slide here on the business call flow slide because the key with that is really it shows how you can actually multi-level that. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, multi-leveling is built in in auto attendant. We give you the capability of using chained auto attendants to build up your menu layer by layer. And I will actually be giving you a demo how um, to build a, a three-level business flow using okay. call queues and auto attendants and business hours and our text-to-speech. Awesome, awesome. So uh, one of the things that, that we want to be able to, to do, and we're going we're gonna to hop into a demo here in just a, just a minute, but one of the questions I've got, and, and we had this, was a lot of people were asking, hey, you know, Cloud PBX is great. The fact that I can assign a phone number in just a minute to users is amazing. Um, one of the, the things that people wanted was, um, was that additional advanced feature. So would you say that this, is, this bridges a gap for us? Uh, it definitely bridges a gap for us, that's for sure, yes. Those are two big features that uh, puts, put us a step ahead towards satisfying completely all telephony scenarios. 
Oh, okay, so one of the things that, that we did, we did get a question here that's actually tied to this, and it's about call cues, and it says, hey, are we ever going to get beyond ringing everyone, right? Uh, like ACD or hunt groups, et cetera, because one of the big challenge that you've got is if you ring everybody, there's not a progression, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the question to narrow it down, the, it's the question about whether or not we're going to add uh, different routing uh, methods to a call queue. Are we going to add serial? Are we going to add round robin? Are we going to add um, what a least called? Um, the simple answer to this is yes. It will not just stay call everybody in parallel. Uh, it uh, Call everybody in parallel is just yeah. included out of the box in version one. But yeah. we are on the path of continuous uh, updates and rollouts with this. This is version one. And it's very similar. I mean, if you think about it, we launched Cloud PBX with basic functionality, right? And this was the first and next advanced feature. We'll continuously build around that and, and, and continue to innovate, specifically identifying those core features. Uh, one of the questions you'll see in that Bing Pulse, which should be on your right-hand side, you'll actually see uh, one of the questions come through about what's the next feature, what's the most important feature next. And obviously, this one was, was, a, was a pretty big deal. Um, well, why don't we uh, take a few minutes and you can show us a little bit about building a demo. Um, and we're going we're gonna to cut over to Marina's machine here and you get to, to watch her as she is going to uh, walk you through building call queues and uh, auto attendance and the whole bit. Yeah, that's wonderful. I hope you can see my screen here. Okay. So what you see here is our admin UI for Cloud PBX. You can find your auto attendance and call queues on the call routing tab. There are sibling features, so they basically come together. And uh, right before this broadcast, I very quickly built up a Vancouver reception call queue for our receptionist in Vancouver. We are, by the way, based out of Vancouver office. You are. I am. Yeah, so we do all of our voice work in Vancouver. And Marina yesterday, or on Wednesday, called me to tell me while it was pouring rain, and blowing sideways here that she had a sunny, beautiful day looking out over Vancouver Bay. So yes, I, did. I, uh, I was very jealous. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I put together a call queue. You can probably see it on my screen right now. I gave it a name, which is essential part of a call queue. I called it Demo Vancouver Reception. I gave it a number. Look at this. For those of us who are Canadian, uh, we can recognize that this is a Canadian number. Is it a 604 there? I see. So, you it know, it's got to be, be BC. It is a BC. It is a Vancouver number. I have many numbers on the list here. I can choose a toll-free number. I can choose a, a Washington uh, area code number. Uh, these numbers are available in many, many geos, even where a PSTN calling is not available. These numbers are conferencing numbers, and they're available. Excellent. And those are, but, and those are our service numbers within conferencing. So you could actually have a number, not necessarily where PSTN calling is, but specifically where you would be able to get this. Correct. Yeah, these numbers for call queues and auto attendance are available in over 90 countries. Awesome. Awesome, that's excellent. Yeah. Uh, I uploaded a greeting from our reception, which is called reception greeting. So, um, so there's a default greeting that would happen saying you've reached this number, or you would build out your custom greeting? Uh, you have to build out your custom greeting. However, the greeting is entirely optional. You can skip it, and it okay. will go directly into music on hold, and it will be sent to an agent. And in fact, for some scenarios, it is better to skip it, especially if you attach it as the end uh, of the menu option. Uh, kind of like where we saw in that business flow slide, one of the farther down the line, you'd probably want music on hold. You wouldn't want another greeting. Right? Yeah, exactly. Saying, oh, by the way, welcome to our sales queue. You're gonna, we're going to send you through. Yes. Sometimes the call queue is the failover option or forwarding option. In this case, greeting is completely unnecessary. You can hide it from the caller that something else happened and a transfer happened. Okay. But let's move on. Uh, you can uh, upload your own custom music on hold for every single queue, but you do not need to. We are aiming uh, for simplicity and streamlined experience, and we provide your default music on, uh, on hold. If you don't want it um, to bother with this, there will be music on hold for you. And as the next step, you have to add your people. 
Uh, you can either use uh, your existing Office 365 distribution list, or you can create a new one, or you can create a security group as well. So in this case, I already chose my receptionists. Uh, all other settings are preset for you. You can uh, govern the maximum number of calls in the queue. Any calls above that number will be spillover calls. You can decide what to do with them. Yeah. One of the questions we got was, is music on hold customizable? And that was what we were saying. Yes, it's totally customizable. You can update your own. That was one of the questions that just came in. I've got Paul in the back uh, managing this. Uh, we're... Uh, so as we do this and, and we roll through this, some of the key things there is that it's extremely customizable and, and the key pieces. Correct. You have defaults, but it's customizable. You have your own music on hold. Yes, yes, yes. You can load it up. Um, beyond governing the maximum size of the call queue, you can also govern how long the call is allowed to wait in your call queue. And over this time limit, it will be... Um, send to any other object that you pick. You okay. can send it to another call queue to escalate, or you can fail it over to auto attendant. Okay, perfect. So the auto attendant in this case would give us a uh, option to, to distribute it. Let's say it just, hey, I want to call an office. I don't have any additional queues there, but I just want to be able to reach Sean Wilson. You would be able to then say, hey, Sean Wilson, or press uh, dial in my name by DTMF tones. And for those that don't know, DTMF, we were having this debate the other day that, you know, you telephony people and IT pros know what DTMF is. But for those that might not, it's actually that functionality that each tone on a keyboard or on a, on a dial pad on a phone actually makes a different frequency sound, which actually is what triggers uh, the uh, IVR or, or even the... the um, recognition for enter by name or press one, they all have different frequencies and that's what the DTMF stands is for. Okay. So this. one of the things I'd like to do is, is it possible for us to, uh, uh, to go in? Oh. Oh, look at that. Something's happening oh, well, here. As you can always tell, uh, our demo, if we want to cut back to video for a minute, we're going to talk a little bit about this while we work on the, the demo for just a minute. One of the things that's interesting is um, when you do these live and you try to do the demos is we have to, to pray to the, to the uh, demo gods that they're all here for us and, and support. We, we authenticated out. We basically were doing this for too long and uh, fell out of authentication. Give us just a moment. We'll switch back to the demo in just a moment. Uh, but what I'd like to do real quick is if we can get into a call queue and set that just so that we can get, the, uh, get people up and running. Um, one of, one of the other questions while you're doing this so you can think about it is, uh, can you have an auto attendant uh, send a call to an external party? Uh, that is a very good question, yes. Uh, this is one of the sets of the upcoming functionality that I'm currently looking at. Okay, so one of the things where, I mean, as we were talking about this, this is a, a key core feature that's sitting on the backlog. Right, so we have a backlog of, of prioritized features and, and we'll be continuing to roll those out. Um, one of the big things I suggest, make sure you stay in preview, right? Because preview is gonna be core to you uh, getting access to those early and giving us the feedback that, that the things work. So can we pop into a uh, auto attendant and, and a call queue and show us how that works and we're gonna go back over to the demo. Okay, let's go back to the demo. So what you see here is the auto attendant UI. And to put together an auto attendant, I have to give it a name, demo Vancouver office, I have to give it a number. As you can see, it's another Canadian number. Mm -hmm. I have to assign it a time zone. Um, I have to pick a language. Excellent. And in this case, I picked the UK English. Okay. It's one of the updated uh, voices that we are working on. Yeah, it's one of the new voices that we built. So instead of those old PBX voice systems of, you know, from you know, the 90s, that, that, that technology, you're getting to use the best of Microsoft's uh, voice recognition and, and speech translation. Yeah, correct. And uh, in this particular case, I want to send, uh, set the call queue that I have just created over here as an operator option for my auto attendant. 
and let's go to what do you mean by reception. operator option uh what operator is is uh, in the old telephony terms you were always able to break out of the automated flow and actually talk to a person by pressing one oh or okay say or zero pressing zero. zero yeah, yeah okay. pressing zero or say an operator of course you can assign nine to be operator but by yep. default it is zero and here you can see that we can set up business hours for our auto attendant. Oh, so we're, we're bankers hours, right? Yeah. We're, we're, well, not really. We're 6.30 till, you know, 5.30. We are very right. hardworking. We are hardworking. And I yes. see that we also happen to have, and so that's Monday to Friday. And then it also, oh, wow. So I can block out lunch very quickly just with a drag and drop. You know, historically in like traditional PBX, that can actually be quite difficult to make sure you set that up because you'd actually have to go in, do every day and be able to manually either enter it in uh, using DTMF or actually go in and, and script it out. So, well, the good news is you have an interface now and it allows you to set multiple breaks. This Excellent. is my coffee break. Oh, awesome. Now, and that would be for our receptionist. So at that point, then if it's outside business hours, we would give it rules like go to voicemail. Yeah, exactly. Something Excellent. like this. And you can see that there is a business hours called handling and after hours called handling. And they are identical. All excellent. options you have for business hours, you will have as after hours. Oh, excellent. Okay, perfect. Okay. And so what would I, so with that, so let's say it's a business hours. Let's scroll up a little bit. I want to mm -hmm. see this because I, I happen to know what we're about to look at. Hmm. So I can actually take this auto attendant and I can actually route it to any number of things, right? So you know, the very first one, operator. select zero for operator, which we just talked about, but I could actually use the one, uh, select one for sales, select two for technical support. Or one of the things about Microsoft is we've built it so that you can do what? You can hook it up to a second layer of menus, and this mm -hmm. is your multi-level system. And in this case, this is services. You see, this is another auto attendant. Yeah, and then, then so then there's, a, there's a, another auto attendant for uh, demo services menu, and then that's going to have three or four Options. different uh, services groups. One might be hardware, one might be software, one might be r returns. Right? Dial by name, anything yep. you want. And and the one thing about this is, is it gives us the capability to do speech recognition. So uh, one of the things that we've been able to do historically is we you would call in and it would say press one for sales. A lot of the now we hear it where people you call in and it says, hey, how do I contact? Jim, you just say, Jim, Jim, Jim Smith, please. Jim Smith, please. Or you say sales, or you say services. Say one, say two. You do not have to punch in the number. Say the number. If you're driving in your car and you want to be hands-free, yep. here. Excellent. In 14 so languages. So we are focusing on safety is what you're saying. Yeah, safety and convenience. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> so continue. Okay. Let's save it. So one of the things that, that we know at... at, at Microsoft and specifically within Skype for Business is that in the telephony space, call queues and auto attendants and, and validating and verifying them historically has been very challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, the number re one reason that that was so challenging was that uh, you then had to basically go and call all the different pieces. So mm -hmm. one of the things you did is you'll see here in just a moment, we've actually built in the automa automatic capability to test. And so this is building a multi-level queue. It's saving it, so it's taking a couple of seconds here. Mm -hmm. But then what we're going to do is we're going to test it, and we're going to we're going to have Marina do some uh, vo voice recognition. And oh, you're going to do DTMF? Oh, yes. uh, we decided because of the open air that we're in, we're going to do DTMF for today. So we're going to use the keystroke. So why don't you give us a give this a test? And okay. So let me actually demonstrate the test button. Uh, the test button is inbuilt in the UI. You can very quickly test your entire setup with Skype. Now, what I will do to demonstrate to you that this is actually completely live and reachable to you from the external PSTN network. Please don't start dialing the uh, queue number on the phone that we see right now. <laughs> I will place a call from my own cell phone. Okay. My old cell phone, I'm not with Microsoft, I am with an external provider. Okay. But whatever I just built in is immediately reachable for me. Okay, so what you're, what you're actually, what you're not seeing is that she is actually calling into the call queue right now from her, from her cell phone, so. Let's do it. Thank you for calling our Vancouver office. For sales, press 
Press or say one. For technical support, press or say two. For services, press or say three. To speak to an operator, say operator or press zero at any time. You can also select any option by simply saying its name or number. To hear this message again, please say repeat or press the star key. I chose services, number three option. Let's hear from services. To reach our parking services office, press or say one. For operations, please press or say two. To perform a directory search, press or say three. So she's pressed three, and the reason this is important is this is a multi-level queue and auto attendance. To search our company directory, please tell me the name of the person you need to find, or simply enter their name. To speak to an operator, press zero or say operator at any time. To hear this menu again, please say repeat or press the star key. Okay, I'm looking for a Peter. Let's see if I can find my Peter. I have found two similar names. We're looking for Peter. For Peter John, press 1. For Peter Hess, press 2. To hear this menu again. So, what you've actually seen is the fact that in a matter of just four or five minutes, we've built out call queues, we've built auto attendance, and then we've just demonstrated that it's that it's live. And, and one of the key things, I'm going to actually open up my uh, laptop here because we've got some questions coming in. Mm -hmm. um, one of, the, one of the things that we have to understand is that by building this in Microsoft Cloud and doing this from ground up, what we've done is we've actually simplified not only the provisioning process, we've really focused on the core features. So one of the things that I, uh, that I would ask is if, uh, if the people in the audience are there and they've got questions, they've got the capability to ask, one of the questions that I would have is, if I was a company and I had a, I had, I had a traditional space that I wanted to go after. Mm -hmm. I was looking at a PBX replacement. What, what scenarios does this now solve? Because I've got some some people that are on prem, some in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what that means. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, this is our initial release, and uh, we made our initial release and we targeted the online customers only. Okay. So our online customers can jump on this, uh, they can use it, they can build up their call flows, see uh, what corners they can fill. So when you say online customers, you mean online customers with online users? The online customers with online users, users. only. Okay. Yes, but we are on the path of continuous updates here. Okay. Uh, new topologies, topologies for CCE customers, for example, they will also be lit up in time. Okay. Wave by wave, we will uh, lit up more topologies, uh, enable more cases, enable more sure. scenarios and sub-scenarios. Our goal is to cover all our customer base. So one of the things you explained to me yesterday actually was, uh, was great, was that you know, we, we talk about the fact that they have to be online. What we haven't actually said is they have to be online, but they don't necessarily need PSTN calling to be the recipient of a call queue or an auto attendant. So a great example for this is, you know, not everybody needs a desk phone, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the ability to call in and out. So one of the things, um, one of the things that, that you can do is actually, if somebody doesn't have a number assigned to them, you can actually through PowerShell, correct? Yep. Through PowerShell, enable the user for enterprise voice in uh, Skype for Business Online Remote PowerShell, and that will actually enable that user to receive calls from the cloud PBX. Now, th the reason that's so important is we have PSTN calling in uh, what? five countries, and one of the big, big pieces with that is we want to be able to help our customers wherever they are. Auto attendance and specifically call queues tend to be very much inbound driven. And so this is a great opportunity for customers to be able to do that. Yes, correct, yeah. Uh, PSTN calling does not need to be offered in your country to, for you to use auto attendance and call queues for inbound scenarios. Yes, you can take a user, user that does not have a PSTN number assigned to it, user who is online user, and you can use a PowerShell commandlet to enable this user 
with enterprise voice. And this user can, can be set as your operator. And this is actually described in details on our support portal. Yeah, one of the things I'll say is, is all of the details live on support.office.com. Uh, detailed instructions on how to do all this. Uh, one of the big pieces that we do want to make sure, uh, kind of as our call to action for you is, if you haven't actually gone and tested out, uh, first of all, Cloud PBX, go try it out. Get it, get it rolling, even at a pilot. You know, the second thing is, is if you have started with Cloud PBX, but you haven't adventured, uh, ventured into the auto attendant and call queues, start going and building them up, testing them, build them within a small group, test them. Um, one of the great things is, is even when you're part of the preview program is that you've got the ability to provide feedback to us for constant innovation. And, and as well, that's also what helps us, um, helps us with our, our future uh, backlog and prioritization and things like that. Yes, yeah. so. uh, I want to say thank you very much, everybody who responded to my surveys. Please keep doing this. I read uh, every single response. Yeah. One of the things we will do is we'll put in the tech community, we can actually add, uh, we'll bring that survey back up. For this community, we'll put it in the, uh, the Skype for Business tech community later today. Uh, but one of the questions that, that I, or one of the things I wanted to make sure we closed on was, A, I wanted to thank Marina, because she drove all the way down from Vancouver to come and do this for us. Uh, we could have done it remotely, but you know it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun and, and as enjoyable to be able to spend the last couple days working with Marina. and. We're now trying out our, our new setup. We know that we've got some stuff we're working on. Uh, just want to appreciate you for uh, joining us, and we'll catch up with you uh, in a couple weeks. Thanks. Thank you.